Welcome back. We'll have your sports news with Nicole Kente in just a couple of minutes from now. First, False Bay in the Western Cape, of course, home to uh, many, many sharks. The iconic Great White is the most recognizable. But more recently, uh, more than 20 different species have been spotted. So what is happening uh, down in False Bay? Let's speak to an expert on the matter. Always a pleasure speaking to Lee Denecker, marine biologist at the Two Oceans Aquarium. Morning to you, Lee. Uh, good to speak to you. Uh, tell me why we have 20 new different kinds of visitors uh, in False in False Bay, what's happening? Good morning, Gareth. So yes, False Bay is an incredibly dynamic environment. So being the massive bay that it is, and also its location, you have, from an environmental point of view, the Gullis Current, which um, comes from the offshore area, and at certain times of year, that warm water from the Gullis Current pushes into False Bay. So we do know if we go more on the Atlantic side of the coast, the water is quite a bit colder. Whereas having these regular flushes of warm water coming into the bay, it does accommodate a lot of prey species for a variety of sharks. So the sharks are going to follow their food. So at certain times of year, when you have these big shoals of yellowtail coming into the bay, the, the predators will follow. So everything from your more offshore pelagic species, like your blue sharks, maker sharks, thresher sharks, will spend short periods of time in the bay, but not very regularly. Um, out of the 20 species that have been observed in the bay, it's there are only about 13 of them that are considered to be found in the bay regularly and um, that are considered common species in the bay. Mm. And this includes things like the great white or bronze whaler sharks, and they will they will move with their prey, which is very abundant in False Bay. You have seals, which accommodate your apex predators like the great whites and your broadnose seven gill sharks. And the migratory fish species will bring in some more, some other sharks too, like your bronze whalers that have been seen very, very regularly in False Bay as recently. And a few days ago, there were a couple of smooth hammerheads and generally juveniles, which will also follow smaller bait fish into the bay. Lee, I imagine for someone like you, Lee, this is for, a, for a marine biologist, is this like Christmas in April, um, Christmas in March for someone like you in your field? Uh, are you able to, to study them? Is there an interest in being able to study them and get more uh, knowledge about the species that aren't there too often? Or is this just a, a good way of, of measuring the migratory patterns and keeping a record of it? So from a research point of view, it is, it is amazing. And it also just shows us the importance of a place like False Bay and why it's so necessary to protect not only the environment, but understand how many species it accommodates. And hopefully the research we, we do can help contribute to the conservation of this diversity of species. And having things like the kelp forest environment, you have these massive sand, sandy patch areas. All of those are different environments that will accommodate a very, very wide array of species. Mm. Even though there have been 20 different species seen in False Bay, I must also just clarify that it hasn't all been at once. This has been over a period of years. Every now and then there's a really rare sighting of an animal we wouldn't expect. And yeah, so we do have a lot more common species that we do see regularly, but many of them are just every now and then one pops in, but it does once again highlight just what a special place False Bay is and the diversity of sharks and other species and other animals that it does accommodate. Lee, just in the last 30 seconds that I have with you, uh, with the, the, the talk now of the different shark species, I, I'm sure you know many people see us putting up a graphic saying 20 shark species spotted and people start panicking uh, about being able to swim uh, in, the, in the beach in the False Bay area. Very quickly, is this going to affect beaches or is this just a fascinating look at how uh, the ecology in the area uh, is growing? So yes, definitely more the latter. It is a fascinating thing to just recognize and acknowledge the diversity and the ecology in the area. But many of these shark species are smaller species that pose absolutely no threat to, to humans. The great white is really the one that we do need to keep an eye out for. And that's why organizations such as shark spotters are so important because mm. they do help educate us on the, the animals, their movements, as well as what we can do as, as people to be safe when using the water. I think it must be a great job to be a shark spotter. It sounds like a lot of fun. Lee Necker, uh, always a pleasure, from the Two Oceans Aquarium. 20 shark species spotted, as she says. Not all at once, no one panic. Uh, it's uh, been a migratory uh, pattern over the last uh, while that they've been observing. So very good news for the False Bay area and that ecology.